And traffic here is absolutely horrendous. You've got a really busy slip road which leads up to the M1. Nearly 150,000 vehicles a day passing by. But this huge wall, which is coated in titanium dioxide, forms part of another trial. Behind it, there's a school. And although it's too early to know whether or not this is making any real difference, the theory is that it should be reducing the level of air pollution to which the children are being exposed. This is just one of the ingenious tactics scientists are trying out. But it's hard to know how much difference they might really make. And in London, a recent experiment with sticky roads was deemed a failure. All the research suggests that the only real solution is to slash car emissions. So far, Britain's been slow to face up to this, and right now the Supreme Court is considering a case calling for EU targets to be enforced here. But there are places where they're taking the problem of car emissions much more seriously. This is Berlin, a city that tops the league tables for improving air quality. I haven't been here for 10 years, but walking around this city, I've really noticed a difference. There are fewer cars, the ones that are here are so much cleaner, more people are walking, more people are using bikes, public transport is so much better. The whole place feels cleaner, and that's because it is. The Berlin government has enforced a total revolution in city transport. Here, emission zones are far stricter than London's, banning older diesels completely. Parking's restricted and bikes are everywhere. But it hasn't been easy, and it's taken a man with single-minded vision to make it happen. Berlin has made some massive changes over the past few years. One of the most important ones is the environmental zones, which keeps highly polluted cars and trucks and buses out of the city. 25% of the cars and trucks produce 75% of the pollution. So if you keep them out, you reduce dramatically in a very short time the air pollution level. Now, you make it sound very easy, but I can't help but think that some of those measures must have been very unpopular. The question is, to whom belongs the city? To cars or to people? In my opinion, it's a clear answer. It should be the people. I think you probably also alerted people to the statistics, because I think many people don't understand the effect of air pollution. Of course, it's important to tell people 60,000 people in Germany every year is killed by air pollution, which is a dramatic number. We can save people's lives. We have saved in the last four years 500 people's lives per year. This is an impressive number. To Axel, pollution is something that just can't be ignored. It's not a nuisance. It's killing people. It's a silent killing. As a result of the cleanup, air pollution in Berlin has fallen dramatically. And most importantly, diesel soot has dropped by over 60% in four years. Berlin offers a vision for how our most polluted cities could look in the future, if we make the right kind of changes. In Britain, we've begun to wake up to the problem, but many of the measures we introduce are piecemeal, whereas here, they've gone for a far more comprehensive approach. There's no doubt that many of the policies were deeply unpopular in Berlin when they were first introduced, but now you've got a city where everyone is benefiting.